I'm filming in my studio today as opposed to the shop because I don't want to talk about building guitars but I do want to talk about guitar tops mostly I want to talk to you about the quality of those tops my video is aimed today at amateur builders or beginning builders or even guitar consumers and maybe professional or semi-professional builders although you may disagree with some of the things that I'm going to uh, promulgate today. But still, what I hope to do is not convert you or change your mind about anything, but I want to get you, if I can, to open your mind about what instrument tops might be. Now, as you know, or probably know, instrument tops are graded basically by aesthetics, and they range from slightly depending on source, uh, from those instrument tops that we would call student grade tops or uh, second grade tops up to ones and twos and I've even seen B grades from one source and then there's the 1A and the 2A and the 3A and master grade and all of that sort of stuff. But those are aesthetic qualities. What they're trying to do is give you an understanding of what you're going to see when you buy this thing, which I suppose is important. But I'd like to kind of steer you in another direction and get you to think in a different way because I think a lot of builders, beginning builders especially, and a lot of guitar consumers think that the more perfect a guitar top looks, the more musically capable it is. And if you don't take anything else away from this video, I want you to take away the fact that what the top looks like probably has absolutely nothing to do with what it can sound like. So I'm going to tour you around the studio and show you some tops and point out some features in those tops that are something other than perfect. Uh, and many of them far from perfect. So we'll start with spruce tops first and then I'll look at some cedar tops and then a couple of other alternate species and we'll talk about, so to speak, downgrades. Another sidebar sort of concept that I want to mention before I get into specifics about tops is a concept of marketing. Now, you can buy freshly cut spruce tops that is, new spruce tops uh, cut from recently standing trees and so on. But we're all aware of the idea of sunken materials, buried materials, um, any of that sort of variation. And some of these tops can be very, very expensive. But while I don't want to discourage anybody from using that kind of material, I want to encourage you to think about there are alternates to those as well. A lot of times you can find your own interesting materials with stories behind them. And you'll see one or two of those tops in my collection. Um, don't let marketing get in the way of your building and don't let the grade of a top get in your way. Consider, for example, that uh, a Sitka spruce top of very high grade you might think to be of high musical quality, but a similar grade Adirondack spruce top is going to look terrible by comparison. And we accept that variation and we accept that downgrade because of the holy grail of Adirondack spruce. Well, there is no holy grail. The material is capable of producing music or it isn't capable. And my contention is that if it's physically uh, capable, that is, if it's structurally sound, if it's properly dried, if it's dimensionally stable, then it may be capable of producing the music that you want to hear in your instrument. And price or aesthetic quality really doesn't have all that much to do with it. Before I go any further, I want to show you these pictures that I just picked up online to demonstrate my principle. Um, this is 
the famous Robert Benedetto Knotty Pine Top guitar. I think this was 1993, but I'm not sure. Um, the top in this, I believe I read that he went to a then-in-business Grossman's Lumber Company um, in Pennsylvania, where he lived at the time, and bought a construction 2x10 and made this guitar out of it. I don't think I need to tell you that the guitar sounds good. I think we can pretty well assume that if Bob Benedetto did it, it's a good guitar no matter what it was. And this is a photograph of the Taylor Pallet guitar, which I had the good fortune of personally seeing at the plant many years ago. Uh, I'm sure, although I've never heard it, I'm sure it's a terrific instrument. And I want to point out especially, I didn't point out anything in the Benedetto top, but look at the stripiness in this top. I think this top, uh, looking from, or working from memory, I believe this was either four or possibly six pieces. And I think I remember reading that this was Western hemlock, um, a chunk of two by four or two by six that they pulled out of their dumpster. So these photographs are to illustrate my point that musicality and aesthetics are completely disparate ideas. I presently have 30 guitars in my studio and more to come, by the way. And I want to point out that not one of these instruments has a very, very high grade top in it. In fact, these are all lower grade tops. And some of the tops can't even be purchased from a luthier supply. They're just, they just don't seem to be offered and some of them are definitely not offered. So we'll start with the spruces. This is a parlor guitar, kind of a nice one too. It's got a nice shimmering tone. And you can see the stripiness, particularly here. And you see that streak right there. Well, you can understand why that wouldn't go as a top grade. Uh, but you will notice that there's a nice amount of cross grain silk in it. A uh, little touch of figure there and a little touch of figure there, if that means anything. Um, but what was interesting about this top is that it was so flexible that it could not be turned into a full-size guitar. I, I bent that top back and forth. I flexed it, and it was so flexible I didn't dare use it. But the way to make it stiffer is to make a smaller guitar. So this instrument's only 12 inches wide. The point being, it's a low-grade top. It doesn't mean that it can't be used. And the guitar relatively shimmers when it's played. <laughs> Moving along to other spruce instruments. I'm gonna get down on the floor here. This is approximately a triple O size guitar. And it's one of my favorites. I really like the color of this top. I particularly like this sapwood to heartwood transition. And I know what you may be thinking already. Well, he put the, he put the young wood in the middle and he didn't bother to you know, put the sapwood to the outside. Well. I did that for aesthetic reasons. I like that. You'll notice that there's a stripiness there. But you'll also notice in this top that the grain is wavy. Now, I can understand, I guess, why a lot of builders wouldn't like that. But it has nothing to do with the musical quality. And these are all split tops, by the way. They're not sawn. Um, so the run out was minimal in all of them. And... When I tap these and work with them, uh, if I don't find them musical, I set them aside and use them for other purposes. But these were all good musical tops. I like this. I really like that. And I like the kind of church dooring effect down here at the bottom. This one is a bear claw spruce. And I suppose this would not be the highest grade of bear claw because there isn't enough bear claw in it. There is quite a bit. Pardon my shifting gears here. Um, you can see that there's color variation in it, but it has quite a bit of bear claw. This was a good stiff top, and I used it. This is another approximately triple O size guitar. Um, this is a terrific instrument, and 
I've enjoyed this one now. I think this is almost 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old. It's a real nice one. Now here's a spruce that is a little more monochromatic, but you can see right there, that's natural to the top, and you can kind of see it back in there too. Um, that would have been would have been a defect, of course, that would have downgraded the top, but it's fairly monochromatic, and the grain count is tight, and there's a fair amount of cross grain silk in that, but still the color variation would have downgraded that. This was also a rather flexible top. Um, not as flexible as some I've seen, but I put this in a, this is a little bit larger than a triple O guitar. Over here, this guitar is uh, 12, 14 years old, maybe a little older. Look at the stripe in that, the color striping. It's very obvious. And of course, these tops, many of them have darkened because they're not brand new. They're a few years old. But look at the stripiness. And the ring count in this is somewhat wider, I guess, than some builders might prefer. But I didn't mind it. I rather, I liked it. I liked it for this guitar. And when I flexed it and tapped on it, it spoke to me in uh, sounds that I wanted to hear. Coming up here, this is a sort of an ornate guitar by my standards, or by my building standards. This is another bear claw, but you can see some of the downgrades, one being right there, one being right there, one there. Uh, that's about all there is to it. This top, to me, almost looks like a sawn top, but I know it isn't, because you can see how it refracts light differently on this side than it does this side. That's usually an indication of some run out, which you would get more easily in a sawn top. Um, I'm not sure that that really is the case, but it suggests that. But this is also another sort of triple O size guitar. It's one that I like very much. This is uh, made of walnut and the back in that is really crazy, but we're not talking about backs today. Here is a jumbo guitar. This is a full lower bout. This is a full 18 inches. Uh, I built this guitar in 2008. And this is a good example of a downed grade top, I guess, because look, there's a little bit of figure here and a little bit here. It's not matched over here. Um, there's a little figure here and it's mismatched over here. And see a little bit of, I don't know, curl, quilt, bear claw. But look right there, there's a, a booger of some kind, a pitch pocket maybe, and a suggestion of another one there, which I probably could have eliminated, but maybe I was pushing the limits to get the full 18 inches out of it. This is another real nice guitar. Pardon me, we're not in tune very well here today. Um, but this is a nice guitar. It's got a terrific sound. It's got a lot of power. Here's another smaller jumbo. This is only 17 inches across the lower bout. And here again, look at that stripey effect. You see it, you know, here and here. But also look at the cross grain silk. It's replete. And the ring count, although not perfectly consistent, is nicely tight. This is another really nice guitar. I love the way this thing sounds. It's a nice, powerful, boomy guitar, but it still seems to retain pretty good trebles. And lastly, swirling around, this is a classical guitar that I just did last fall. It has, of course, a spruce top, and the grain is clearly crooked. Look, look at the wave in that grain. But the cross grain silk is there and I don't know how important cross grain silk is to some of you. I don't take a lot of it as an indication of stiffness automatically, but I do like the way it looks. And so when I get it and it's replete and it's obvious, I enjoy using it. This was a particularly good top. I chose it for this classical guitar because the lower tension strings 
and being that they're polymer, they're harder to get nice clear trebles out of. Um, and so I wanted something that was nice and stiff that would speak well, and this seemed to do the job very nicely. And now let's take a look at some cedar tops. Here's a cedar top. I believe this was built probably 2010, something like that. I could look in the tag, but I won't tilt the camera that far. Um, this top, these appear to be defects in the top. They're not. They're booger marks that I put there. It's wear and tear. This guitar has seen an awful lot of use. There's another dent or something that I've put in it and another one down here and here. So this thing's kind of been through the mill. But look how nice and consistent the top is. This is, in fact, when I bought this top, um, which this top, I believe, came from LMI. That was a second grade cedar top at the time I bought it. I don't think if you could get a second grade cedar, I don't think it would even be that high quality. But that was the grading at the time. And it's nicely consistent. And I liked the color. When this was new, it had a very nice... Uh, toasty, sort of goldy brown pink to it that I really liked. This is this is a wonderful guitar. Um, I've played this an awful lot, as you can see. And this is, by the way, a sort of a double O size guitar. Uh, same size guitar down here. Uh, this is another Cedar. Now this one is a cedar that I don't care for as much because of its color. I do like its ring count. That was very nice. The top had reasonable stiffness um, and I used this top for a demonstration in setting rosettes and then I put it aside for almost a year and decided I better use it because it's just irresponsible to uh, not use a, an instrument top for whatever you can. Uh, this guitar, kind of a sidebar, this guitar is made of wormy American chestnut, the neck and the back as well, and it's trimmed in yellow poplar heartwood. Um, I wanted this guitar to look like it came out of the attic, and that's just what we got out of the deal. And that's quite a nice sounding guitar as well. Um, other cedar tops, I don't have a lot of them in my possession. Most of them that I've built are now not in my possession. They've been sold or made for other people. This is an acoustic bass, of course, and this is, uh, I believe, 17 inches across the lower bout. And this one is braced up a little bit tighter, so I don't feel that the tone is, is as exciting as it could be. But again, nice, dark toasty color and a little bit of stripiness you can see there not too much but nice cross grain this is another top that was probably purchased at the same time that I purchased the that other one that I first pointed out um, I believe this guitar was built I don't maybe you can see the date I don't know 2007 or 8 something like that all right, there are the cedar tops. I do have two uh, redwood tops. The, they are both classical guitars. As you can see, this one has got the sapwood right in the middle. These are sawn tops, and they've been out of the logs since probably, well, mid, if not late, 60s. And as I said, they were sawn tops. These are not split, and they were narrow. There were only just barely seven and a half inches wide. The each side was seven and a half inches. Um, I resawed these out of planks, and they are very, very nice tops. But I put the sapwood in the center in this one because it looked so stupid having just a little bit of it out here at the edge of the bout. Very nice tops. In fact, I still have I still have several of those tops in store in the shop. And some of them are better than others, but some of them just literally, just when you tap them, they shimmer and they sustain for a long time. All of the spruce and cedar tops that I've shown you, I have sourced from Western suppliers. 
uh, particularly Luther's Mercantile International and Alaska Specialty Woods. Although they don't sponsor me, I have nothing, I have no relationship with them other than being a customer, and I get nothing in this video uh, for mentioning their names. We are totally unrelated in that regard. So I want to turn your attention now to really a favorite wood of mine. This is Douglas fir. Now, I saw somebody a while ago on YouTube show, holding up a piece of Douglas fir, and the, I think the title of the video was, Why Are They Keeping This a Secret? Well, it, Douglas fir is not a secret, and I don't believe it ever has been. I'm sure other Luthers have used it. I'm not unique. But I have built 25 guitars or more out of this stuff, the first one being back as far as 1994 or 1995. So it's nothing new to me, and I can't say enough good things about it. If this suits your needs for uh, aesthetics and sound, it could be a good ticket for you. Um, this is a bass guitar, an eight-string bass, full 18-inch body, and this is a, kind of a fun guitar, although I'm not a bass player. Um, this top, excuse me, uh, you can see it has little pitch pockets. In it, which are common in Douglas fir. Some of them are even larger than these. And you can see that the grain is a little bit wavy, but the ring count is quite nice. This top really, uh, it flexed beautifully, it tapped beautifully, and so I made it right up. It's a really nice, nice top. Here's another one. This is a sort of a harp guitar, you could call it. It's just really three drone strings off of a six-string instrument. And you can see the ring count in this is not nearly as tight as the last top I showed you. And given the look of it, uh, the growth rate was faster, but it might have been slightly less than absolutely vertical grain. Still a nice top. And the grain, of course, is wavy and there is some stripey effect in it. The next one is this 12 string guitar. Now you can see obvious stripes like this and it, see it runs all the way down and you can also see in that shadow I guess there's that little pitch pocket I mentioned those before. Um, those are not physical defects. They can be if they get large enough, but in this case, it's not a physical defect, so it's highly useful. This is another, this is a pretty neat guitar. And moving around, I'm going to show you, here is a slightly larger than parlor guitar with a Doug fir top, and you notice this discoloration here. I've yet to explain that, but I think it has something to do with continual stress on the instrument. It was not that color when I built it, but being that it's around the bridge and down here around the tail block, I think it has to do with stress. Still, a nice top, a little bit larger, uh, greater ring count than some, and you can see this unusual curl here. There are only three of these tops. I have two of them and my 110th guitar uh, is owned by a customer that has one of those tops in it. Here's the other top from the same billet and you can see similar color variation here that's appeared in it and you can see that one curl. A lot of people probably would not want to see that in a top but I didn't mind that. I thought it was kind of an interesting mark. And you can also see that the right side of the top and the left side of the top refract light differently. That could be from being sawn tops, the runout is different from one side to the other. And you have to be careful about runout in sawn tops. If it's too great, it will leave one side of the top or the other. Um, the grain will be oriented such that the bridge can pull it up. Dan Earlywine theorizes that when that bridge can pull that grain up, you're likely to have that bridge pull loose on that side and that can be trouble. But if you're careful with run out, I think sawn tops work just fine. Now, here's a Doug fir top. And 
this isn't just Douglas fir, but this is one of the things that I promulgate when I talk about tops in the first place. This is a four-piece Douglas fir top. Now, the reason it turned out this way is really simple. These were cutouts from the bird's eye food plant in Fulton, New York. They were rebuilding their refrigerator and cooler doors, which some of you may know uh, those old cooler, walk-in coolers and stuff. The doors were always made of Douglas fir. They were rebuilding some of those, and I got scraps, cutoffs from that job. Way back in 1972, I got this material. And you can see, you know, sapwood matched to heartwood and so on. This guitar has been around since 1994. And it's, a, it, it's not that great an instrument. I won't tout it as being a work of art by any means, but it sounds pretty good. This was very early in, in my uh, tenure as a builder. But it's a pretty neat guitar. It's been very stable. Okay, so there's Douglas Fir Tops. So now, let's look at some tops that you're not going to buy from Luther Supplies. We'll start with this. This is a parlor guitar. Nice little instrument. It's got a nice shimmer to it. Demure as a parlor would be, expectedly. But this is walnut. Now, I'm sure other people have used walnut. In fact, I've even aware of guitars with a purple heart top, if you can imagine that. But this isn't even quarter sawn. It's flat sawn. It's very old walnut that I got years ago from a gunsmith. And the reason I used it for the top was because as I was drum sanding out some leaves to build other instruments, I just happened to tap on this. And the ring was such that I thought, let's try a parlor instrument. And it became a parlor instrument because these particular pieces were too narrow to get much of anything else out of but it works. It's got a nice tone to it. It's a pleasant little guitar to play. Here is something that is, uh, I will, I'd like to say absolutely unique, but possibly not. This top is Eastern Hemlock. This is what we use around here uh, for the sides of hay wagons, rough framing of buildings and barns and that sort of thing. Um, this is by no means considered uh, an instrument wood or a tone wood of any kind. However, I got this billet. It fell off of an edger at a mill. They were sawing some 10 quarter stock and I got this narrow billet. It was only about four, four and a quarter inches wide and long enough to produce a top. I brought it home. I let it dry. I resawed it and put it back and stick up in the shop and let it dry for a longer period of time. And after a few years, I made a four-piece top out of this. This is the second one of these that I've done. I don't have the first one. It's now since last December. It's in the hands of a customer that bought it out of my private collection. You can see there is clearly a defect here and here, which I would not put in a customer's guitar, but in my own, and considering that this was pretty much an experimental top, you, go, you just do it because you have to. You just have to. Um, you can see it's got some nice cross grain silk right here. But next to it, the next piece over, eh, it isn't even perfectly quartered. And then we're back to some cross grain silk. So there's a lot of variation in this top. An awful lot of it. But still, this guitar, it's got a nice shimmer to it. It's a, it's a very playable instrument. It's pleasant. This is approximately a triple O size guitar again. Um, this is one of my favorites for my own purposes. Um, and you're not likely to find hemlock. And if you go to a mill, you're not going to get them to quarter saw anything unless you're going to buy the whole log. So it's, it's kind of hard to find, I'm, I'm quite sure. This is something truly unique and while we're talking about unique, there's a lot of tops available from sunken logs, buried logs, uh, salvaged timber, and so on. And some of these top pieces, I've seen prices as much as $2,000 for these. Now, I'm not arguing that they're not worth the money, but 
it's not because of the music they make. It's because of what you're seeing and because of what the piece of wood is. It's not because it is physically more capable of making music. And here is sort of proof. Uh, I like this top very much. This is Cypress. This was brought to me by a friend 10 years ago in very narrow pieces and all covered with tar. And he explained to me that this used to be water supply pipe in a fish hatchery just north of where I live. Um, its color is because it was underground for 83 years. I had to put four pieces, maybe five together to get a top out of it. There was quite a lot of defect in it from being underground and it was narrow to begin with. But aesthetically, I find this top fascinating. And of course, because of what it was in the first place and because of its age, you kind of look the other way. We're not looking for chromatic tops and perfect anything really. We're just after that nice toasty color and the wonderful history. This is a nice guitar. It's got a dark tone, kind of a deep tone. The instrument is physically a little bit deeper, so which brings a little bit of that out, but it's a nice guitar. Um, I can't speak to longevity because I've only had this together, well, for three years now. So in another five years, we'll see how it does. Now this top is a real weirdo, and this is really the top that caused me to want to make this video. Uh, this top is not spruce, it's not hemlock, this is common white pine. And as you can see, it is quartered, but the growth rings are very, very wide in this, very wide. And you'll also notice the top is mismatched. This came out of a three foot length of pine that happened to be quarter sawn. I bought five or six years ago from a local mill. And uh, I had dressed the stuff down to three quarters of an inch thick for other purposes and realized I had some quartered stuff in this billet. And I couldn't get a four piece top out of it because it was too thin to resaw that out of. So I intentionally made a three-piece mismatch top. Now I'm sure some of you are looking at that and just shuddering at the sight of it, but I did it because you have to. I looked at it, I said it's quartered, I tapped on it, it had a wonderful nice ring to it, a nice, it had a softness, but it had a sustain that I thought was just wonderful. And this guitar has only existed now since 2022. Uh, in fact, What's the date on that? Uh, September 20th, 2022. So it hadn't been around for very long. I'm confident that it's perfectly stable. This is actually the third pine top that I've done. One of them was wholly unsuccessful and the other one is, I think in North or South Carolina and I wished I'd never sold it. But this is a nice guitar. This has turned out to be one of my favorites. <laughs> So you can do a lot with alternate materials. You can do a lot with top materials and orientations if you give them a chance. And I want to encourage anybody that sees this video to think that over and take a chance once in a while. Build yourself an experimental guitar and see how it works out. And if it does, then maybe you'll build for other people in the same stuff. Thanks for watching my video regarding guitar tops. I'm hoping that what you'll come away from this presentation with more than anything is that regardless of grading, which is aesthetics, any musical top, as long as it's structurally sound and properly dried, is useful. And I want to encourage you to look at those other grades of tops for their musicality and their aesthetic qualities rather than just assuming that they are somehow of lesser value, that is, lesser value musically. I also want to encourage you to look at top materials that are not widely used. Douglas fir, um, hemlock is a real weirdo, i got to admit, but it's there. And I'm sure there are some others 
that you would find of great use. So thanks again. And I'm hoping that you'll look forward to some other videos by me. I have done several others. But for the first time, I'd like to ask you to put a like on this and to subscribe to my videos and look forward to more videos from The Pragmatic Luther. Thanks again. I'm Kevin Ledoux at Ledoux Guitars. Thank you.